Hey, it's Alicia with mobilitymastery.com and no matter what your pain is, whether it's an injury that you're currently experiencing, maybe chronic pain, maybe something recent, maybe it's soft tissue, maybe it's nerve pain, maybe it's joint pain or an itis, whatever your pain is, I want to help you solve it. So I'm going to give you some guiding principles that will help you think about pain, your own pain, from the perspective more of a practitioner than a person in pain uh, that will allow you to really solve any pain that comes your way. So if you really adopt these three things here, you will be able to solve just about any pain. Now, there are definitely some circumstances that would require an outside perspective and somebody to problem solve it with you, but I'm of the firm belief that we can problem solve most pain and injuries that we experience in life, and I wanna help you do that. So guiding principle number one here is something I've been saying over and over and over since I've been doing this work since 2008, um, and then since I've been on YouTube since 2015. And it's probably, if you've been here a while, it's not gonna feel new, but it's always worth repeating. Any guesses? <laughs> What hurts isn't the cause or root cause. So I put root in parentheses here because um, there are compensations that happen in the body and oftentimes it's actually what compensates that causes the pain that you get, the pain signal you get, but it's still not the root cause. Uh, but neither of these, the root cause nor the compensation cause, is what hurts you. Uh, so this is true like 98% of the time. There are a few rare exceptions to this rule, but most of the time it's true. So what hurts isn't the problem. What hurts isn't the cause of the hurt or the pain. Um, said another way, where the pain is, isn't the problem. For example, let's say you have low back pain. This is an ex a classic example that I love using. Your low back structure and muscle and fascia is not typically the problem. Uh, even though you're getting a pain signal in that area, the cause is something else. And the root cause might be something else entirely. So, you know, for example, you might have uh, compensation in the QL, QL muscles, which are a low back muscle, where they're like hanging on for dear life to try to stabilize your spine, or maybe that psoas attachment is doing overtime for pelvic instability, but the root cause is in your legs. Um, going to the low back is gonna make things worse typically because you're gonna destabilize that area even more. Uh, and in the case of low back pain, for example, it's usually coming from leg fascia. So I'm talking about the quads and the quad hip flexor fascia, the adductors and the IT bands and the hamstrings primarily that cause some sort of pelvic tilt or shift um, that sends a signal to your spine that there's a problem. But Oftentimes before we get that pain signal, muscles try to compensate. So your hamstrings may even try to compensate for the quads um, and you might get relief stretching your hamstrings, but the hamstrings aren't the root cause either, right? So you might get some relief from the hamstrings, which isn't your low back. So we're talking like the, you know, it's some causation there of hamstring tightness and low back pain, but the root cause is something else altogether. Um, so I hope this is kind of making sense. Uh, so this is just guiding principles Principle number one, don't go to what hurts. Don't release what hurts. Um, it's generally gonna make things worse. So that goes for head to toe issues. If you have plantar fasciitis, ignore your feet. Like do not release the fascia in your feet. Um, primarily if you have, you know, uh, neck pain, you typically you wanna avoid your neck fascia. It's usually not the problem. Um, you want to go somewhere else. So uh, I hope that's making sense. And moving on to number two, um, you're going to want to, you know, after really getting this, this is your next step. You're going to want to map your upper and or lower body fascia. So you can use fascia release as a self-diagnostics tool 
to find the root cause of your pain. And like I said, you're going to avoid what hurts. So, you know, if you have joint pain, you're typically not going to be releasing fascia in the joint. Uh, but having said that, just know that that's true. Um, so I'm talking, you know, soft tissue. If pain presents in a soft tissue area, you definitely want to avoid that. Uh, otherwise, you're general, generally going to release, you know, let's say you have elbow tendonitis. If you're doing an upper body fascia release session on yourself, you're going to do the areas around that elbow, right? So you're going to do your release your forearms, you're going to release your brachialis and your biceps and your triceps and see how you feel. And what I mean by map is you're looking for the areas of fascia that are the unhealthiest. So they're going to hurt the most when compressed. So uh, when you're doing the fascia release, right? So it's going to be more intense in the areas that are unhealthy. So that's one way of mapping. So you're going to just take note of, oh, wow, my, I'm right-handed and my right forearm extensor fascia is really tight. That makes sense. I'm on the computer a lot or I do something with my right hand a lot. So um, we're kind of almost getting into step three here. Um, but these two go kind of go hand in hand and you can do them at the same time. So once you get used to these steps, you can kind of do them all at once. I mean, this is just the guiding principle. And once you get it, you're, you're done. Um, and then these two comprise the bulk of the work you're going to do to solve your pain. So a complete upper body session or a complete lower body would consist of the basic uh, big muscle areas in the fascia there. So I'm not talking about like all the nooks and crannies or all 600 muscles that exist in your body, right? I'm talking about big muscle groups. Um, and then once you've kind of mapped it, so you've taken note of what you're releasing in your upper body, say in this example of elbow tendonitis, actually not once you've done it, while you go, you really want to take note of what diminishes your pain the most. So, you know, something might really surprise you and that could be amazing data. So you don't want to get so focused on what you think is going to really, you know, eliminate your pain. You want to focus on getting curious about what it, what actually eliminates your pain. So you don't want to go into a mapping session thinking, you know, what's going to happen. So you want to stay curious. Uh, so in that example I gave, maybe you, you know, maybe these forearm extensors are really tight and you think, well, it would make sense that they could cause, you know, this area could cause elbow tendonitis, but maybe when you move your arm and kind of test it, the tendonitis pain that you have is still there. And then you go to your triceps and after releasing your triceps, that elbow tendonitis just vanishes or maybe decreases by three to four points out of 10. So I'm a huge fan of before you map anything, rate your pain. Um, so I don't want to get too stuck in the weeds on like some of these details, but I would love to have you rate your pain before mapping it and then kind of check in as you go to see which techniques are actually getting you the most relief. And then once you're done with that, what you really have to do to solve your pain for good, I think, is this last step. And this is the thing I think most people leave out, especially when they're working on their own. And this is what I focus on with this channel is you want to make sense of your pain by assessing your life and lifestyle. I have come to learn that until we make sense of our pain, our brains don't want to let go of it because your brain wants to be able to categorize that danger, file it away in its you know, database of knowledge about how to survive the longest amount of time on this planet, <laughs> how to stay alive the longest, right? So it needs to categorize that danger in a filing cabinet in your brain so that if it ever happens again, it knows what to do. You know what to do. Uh, so there's a tendency to, you know, even, even if we're doing all the right things with our actions, if the pain hasn't made sense to us yet, so you haven't had that, that aha moment, like, oh my God, that is why my back hurts all the time. That makes so much sense, right? If you haven't had that moment, uh, chances are your pain's going to come back or it might not even 
go away. You might not even get relief, even with all the best fascia release. So you're going to make sense of it by assessing your life and lifestyle. Uh, so the first place I always have people start is assess your sports and um, any shapes that you take with your body over consistent time. So that means if you sit at a desk, that's one thing. It's how you sleep in your bed. If you always read at night, like the, on this side, right, and you're kind of flipping pages with your right hand and this is curled, like that's going to tell me something. Um, if you always lean on your left leg or you always lean on your right leg or you have kids and you always hold them on your left hip, you get the idea. So I have videos on this topic that can actually walk you through the most common lifestyle habits that can cause fascial tightness and compensation leading to pain. So that might be something you want to check out. Um, we'll link to it below in the description. Uh, but you want to assess your life and lifestyle. And that might come back to assessing some more psycho emotional stuff, some psychosomatic stuff. Uh, maybe there's a mind-body connection somewhere. Maybe there's something going on in the nervous system. Uh, but that's not really the purpose of this video. I'm kind of sticking with physical pain and the kind of physical laws of, you know, the physical laws that govern our body. Um, there are definitely overlapping more emotional, psychological, subconscious laws. Uh, but um, for the purpose of this video, I'm mean, just going to kind of stick with uh, basic pain and pain relief. So at the physical level, what hurts isn't the problem. So don't go there. Don't release your low back fascia if you have back pain, don't release your plantar fascia if you have plantar fasciitis, etc. Map your upper and or lower body. And then as you map it, test your pain, like test and retest. So rate your pain, re-rate it as you go and just kind of look at like where the tightest areas of fascia are and then compare those tightest areas to your life and lifestyle. And then hopefully that these two in combination are going to give you that aha moment. Uh, for example, you know, I was talking about low back pain. If you always lean on your left leg and you have kids and that left side of your body, your left leg is, you know, having to do a lot more work and your right leg is just kind of hanging out a lot of the time, um, then you might have low back pain or sciatica on your right side but it's actually not your right leg fascia that's contributing mostly. It might be more on that left side. And when you connect the dots between the tight fascia in your legs on the left side to those lifestyle habits, that's when you have that ding, ding, ding. Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. So I hope that this makes sense to you. And these are really my, my three primary guiding principles for solving any pain. Um, through fascia release. Uh, so if you have any questions at all, I want you to post them below. I also want you to know that I have a beginner's guide to fascia release PDF download for you that has the basic upper and lower body techniques for mapping that I talked about in this video. It has hyperlinks to all of those techniques that you can find on the blog um, or YouTube channel. And it also just walks you through some basic principles of effective fascia release. So it's stuff like, you know, you don't want to get sore and how long to do, you know, fascia release on each spot, stuff like that. So if you're new to fascia release or new to this channel, you can grab that by clicking the link below. We'll have that in the description box um, because that would be a great accompaniment to this video. So post your questions below, post your comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.